Good morning, everybody. We're going to do um, reduction in tread today. Now, reduction means exactly what the word says. It's reducing, but what we're reducing is we're reducing larger angles to smaller angles, to acute angles. So whatever the size of the large angle, we're reducing it into an acute angle. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with the sine of 30 degrees. So let's see what that is on our calculator. You'll notice it's a special angle. 30 degrees is a special angle, so we could do it using our triangles. But we're just going to do it on the Casio. And the sine of 30 degrees gives us a half. So that is going to be equal to a half. Let's quickly work out those. The sine of 150 is also a half. Sine of 210 is negative a half, and the sine of 330 is also negative a half. So the interesting thing here is that each of these angles, whether it's 30, 150, 210, or 330, all reduces to a half. Just some are positive, some are negative, and that would tie in with our cast diagram. Let's have a look. So if we have the sine of 150, 150 is in the second quadrant, and we know from our cast diagram that sine is positive in the second quadrant. Then if we look at 210, 210 is in the third quadrant, sine is negative, so it would have to be negative. And 330 all the way around into the fourth quadrant only cos is positive there, so it would have to also be a negative a half. So the interesting thing here is that all of these three, four angles, all of those three larger angles reduced to be sine of 30. Now let's look at why that possibly, possibly happens, because in this little triangle here, this is your x, this is your y, this is your r, here as well. If we talk about this triangle here, if that's 150, what would this angle be here? 180 minus 150, it must be 30 degrees, right? X, Y, R. Then what happens to this if we take 210? 210 is what? It's actually that, as far as that is 180. 180, and then we have to make that 30, because 180 plus 30 gives me 210. So once again, this is my little right angle triangle here, my X, my Y, my R. Then if we look at 330, 330 takes us all the way around to the fourth quadrant, but what is that? All the way around is going to be 360, but if the angle is 330, then that little acute angle once again must be 30 with an X, a Y, and R. So what's happened here is each of our angles have reduced to an acute angle. Um, this one we could also write in terms of 30, because if we think about it, all the way to there is 180, but if I only want 150, then the acute little angle there is going to be 180 minus 30, which gives me 150. So in each of these cases here, this larger angle reduced to be the same as sine of 30. That reduced to sine of 30. That reduced to sine of 30. Now let's, interestingly enough, see how it ties up to the actual graph of sine as well. So if I've got my basic sine graph, I'm just going to do it for our basic 0, 180, 360. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so I want to know sine of 30, so that's going to be about there, so 90 would be here, so 30 is going to be about there, 150 is going to be about here, 210, halfway there would be 270, so 210 is going to be about there, 330 degrees, 330 will be about there. Now let's have a look there, that would also be... So at that point, that point, it would equal a half. That point, that point, would be minus a half. And that ties in as well with my Cartesian plane. So here in the Cartesian plane, sine of 30 is a half. Sine of 150 is also a half. Sine of 
to 10 minus a half sine of 330 minus half. So essentially, I can take any larger angle and I can reduce it to acute. Let's do another example. And now we're going to look at cos 45 and we're going to reduce large angles to the acute angle. Let's see what they look like. So the first one is if we do cos 45 on the calculator, we get root 2 over 2. Then if we do cos 135, if we visualize it, going to lie in the second quadrant, so cos will be negative minus root 2 over 2. Cos of 225 takes us to the third quadrant. Cos of 225 is also going to be negative because we know from our cos diagram it's going to be negative. Cos in the third quadrant is negative. So now I suppose my question to you is if we have a large angle happening in the fourth quadrant, okay, it's definitely going to be positive, and we want to reduce it so it's going to be root 2 over 2, because I want to reduce larger angle, larger angle, larger angle to be 45. So what is the very large reflex angle going to be if I wanted to reduce to root 2 over 2? Let's see if you can think about that. So this one, that's 45, that's 135. So that's 180 minus 45, which gives me 135. This one is 180 plus 45 to give me 225. So my question here is if it is the same ratio, root 2 over 2, what is this angle here going to be? We know that that has to be 45, so what's that going to be? It's going to be 360 minus 45, which is going to be 315. Test it on your cast here. Cos of 315. Cos of 315 gives me root 2 over 2, and it's positive. Good. Okay, so now you've got how we can reduce every larger angle to an acute angle. Now I'm going to just give you a whole lot of random angles, and we're going to reduce it to the acute angle. We first say, what quadrant are we working in? first, second, third, fourth, is it positive or negative in that quadrant? And then we reduce it to an acute angle. Every single larger angle obtuse reflex, even bigger than that, um, bigger than complete revolutions, can always be reduced to a specific acute angle. And it makes sense if you tie it up with the graph. If we look at our cos curve, okay, so the end, if we just draw one, Okay, let's look where 45 is. Um, 135, 225, 315. So each time this here is root 2 over 2, and this here would be minus root 2 over 2, which just out of interest, what would that be in decimal? So we go square root 2 divided by 2, and it's going to be 0 0.707. Okay, so this is where we're starting with. We're reducing numerical um, degrees down into an acute angle. Okay, let's do some more examples. Okay, so we're going to now reduce these few um, examples. We're going to reduce, in each case, the bigger angle to an acute angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves the following questions in each case. What quadrant is this larger angle? And is the result positive or negative? And then I'm going to reduce it to an acute angle. So if we look at sine of 290, let's see which quadrant is 290. And it's going to go there's 180, 270, 290. So it ends up being in the fourth quadrant. And we know that sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be negative. The next thing then is, what is this acute angle? So if all the way around to there is 290, the question is, what is that acute angle there? And if we think about it, all the way around is 360. So to find out that little acute angle, we're going to go 360 minus 290, and that's going to give us 70 degrees. So that little acute angle there is 70 degrees. 
So 290 reduces to 70. Now, we're not going to check all of them, but let's just check this quickly on our Casio. We'll do it in a different color. Sine of 290 on your Casio. Check that it produces minus 0 0.939. And minus sine 70 on the Casio also produces minus 0 0.939. So that means sine of 290 is equal to negative sine of 70. I've changed 290 to an acute angle. Okay, let's do the next one. We now got the cos of 290, so we're going to do it in exactly the same way. We start off by the first question, what quadrant am I working in? So 290 goes zoop, 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 all the way around to the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, cos is positive, so it stays cos. Then what is the acute angle? It's going to be 360 minus 290. And that's going to give me 70 degrees once again. So cos of 290 reduces to cos of 70. Let's do the third one. Tan of 290. 290 goes zoops all the way around to the fourth quadrant. And in that quadrant, tan is negative. So it's going to be negative tan. And we now already know that the acute angle is just going to be 70. Okay. Why don't you try to do sine of 128 on your own quickly? So remember the first question is, what quadrant are we working in? 128. Second quadrant. And sine is positive. So it's going to be positive. Then what is that little acute angle there? To work it out, it's going to be 180 minus 128. And that gives us 52. So the sine of 128 is equal to the sine of 52. I've taken 128, a large angle, and I've reduced it to get an acute angle. And you can always just quickly check on your Casio again. What is the sine of 128? And you get... 0.788. What is the sine of 52? It is also 0.788. So these are equivalent um, expressions. Sine of 128 is equal to the sine of 52. Okay, I'm going to do a few more. Let's try and speed it up again. You can do this again on your own. Quadrant 332 takes me to the fourth because is positive. And it's going to be 360 minus 332, and we get cos of 28. Tan of 95. Let's quickly let think. 95, that's 90. 95 takes me to the second quadrant. Tan is negative in the second quadrant. How do I get that acute angle there? It's going to be 180 minus 95 gives me... 180 minus 95 gives me 85. So that's going to be 85 degrees. Sine of 340. Oopsie. Will be negative sine of 20 degrees. 225. Third quadrant. Cos is negative. So it's negative cos. And this one is going to be 225 minus that angle there, because I want that to be my acute angle. So 225 minus 180 is going to give me 45. Next one. 492, where is that? So 492, let's take it to the quadrant. That takes me to 360. Let's just quickly check 492 minus 360 gives me 132. So this is going to end up all the way in the second quadrant again. Okay, because 492 goes 360, 450, 492 is in the second quadrant. So tan is negative there. And it's the same thing. If that takes me to 132, it's going to be 180 minus 132 and you get 48. Okay, sine of 725, let's check. 725, 360, around a second time takes me to 720. So 725 is in the first quadrant. 
So that means sine is positive. And what is this acute angle here? 720 is up until this line because it's 360. 360 plus 360 is 720. So this angle here, the acute angle that I need is going to be 5 degrees. Done. Now we come to negative angles. Hmm. Now the first thing to remember about negative angles is that they go in the opposite direction. So we always measure angles going anti-clockwise this way. But now if we have negative angles, they always go clockwise. Starting from 0 degrees, they go round this way. So let's have a look. If I have cos of minus 28 degrees, that is going to take me not this way. No, it's going to take me this way of minus 28 degrees. It's going to end in the fourth quadrant. And the fourth quadrant cos is positive. So it's just going to be cos of 28. Why? Because the acute angle is just 28 degrees. Let's do tan of minus 240, number 12. Okay, where do we end up? So this is going to be this direction. So that's minus 90, minus 180, because this is the 180 line. Then minus 240 is going to take me into this quadrant here. So let's go through that. We're going around like this. That's going to end up in the second quadrant. And tan is negative in the second quadrant. What is the acute angle? Okay, this up to there is going to be 180. So that little extra to get to 240 is going to be 240, to quickly do the maths, minus 180 is going to be 60 degrees. So tan of minus 240 degrees is equal to minus tan of 60 degrees. Each time we just ask ourselves what quadrant am I working in and what is the acute angle. Okay, good luck grade 11.